Hi everyone, welcome to Unprocessed Math. In this lecture, I will talk about the Leibniz integral. So suppose you're given a function of this form. So it's the integral from ax to bx of the function ft dt. So you notice that the lower bound and the upper bound here are functions of x. And suppose we want to differentiate this function. So this is going to be a function depending on x, and I want to take it derivative. So the derivative, the Leibniz integral rule tells you that the derivative is going to be computed by this formula. So it's b prime, which is the upper bound, multiplied by the function f evaluated at the upper bound, minus derivative of the lower bound multiplied by the function evaluated at the lower bound. And that's how you keep this formula in mind. It's the derivative of the upper bound multiplied by the function evaluated at the upper bound minus derivative of the lower bound multiplied by the function ev evaluated at the lower bound. Let me show you uh, a few examples and this will be uh, more clear. Suppose we want to differentiate this function. So by using Leibniz rule, this is going to be the derivative of the upper bound, so that's going to be the derivative of sine, multiplied by this function, but t replaced by the upper bound. So t replaced by upper bound, which is sine, is going to be e to the sine x. Then minus, now you repeat the same process with the lower bound. So it's, it's minus derivative of the lower bound, derivative of the lower bound, multiplied by this function, but t has to be replaced by the lower bound. If you, if you substitute t by the lower bound, which is x squared, you're going to get e to the x squared. So that's what I get. Now, you just simplify this and that's your final answer. Derivative of sine is cosine, multiplied by e to the sine x, and the minus derivative of x squared is 2x, multiplied by e to the x squared. So you see, it's derivative of the upper bound multiplied by the function e to the t, but t replaced by the upper bound, minus derivative of the lower bound multiplied by this function, but t replaced by the lower bound. And, and that's it. So that's how you use the Leibniz rule to, to differentiate this type of functions. So let's look at another example. We, we would like to differentiate this function. So the derivative is going to be the derivative of the upper bound, derivative of cosine, multiplied by this function, but t replaced by the upper bound. So you see, if you replace t by the upper bound, which is cosine, you will get cosine x squared plus 1. And then minus, now you repeat the same process with the lower bound. So derivative of the lower bound, multiplied by this function, but t replaced by lower bound, which is x cube. Now you just simplify this. Derivative of cosine is minus sine, multiplied by the same function, minus derivative of x cube is 3x squared, and x cube to the power 2 just becomes x to the power 2 times 3, which is x to the 6 plus 1. So this simplifies to this function. And this function is the derivative of, of this function in integral form. So let's look at another example. Now here, we'd like to differentiate this function with respect to x. That's a function of x, and we're different. We would like to differentiate with respect to x. So now I'm going to use the Leibniz rule. It's going to be the derivative of the upper bound, upper bound is just a number now. It's derivative of 2 multiplied by this function, but t replaced by the upper bound. So that just becomes sine of 2. Minus derivative of the lower bound, lower bound is now e to the x, multiplied by this function, but t replaced by the lower bound. And now you just simplify this. So derivative of 2 is 0. So this is going to be 0 multiplied by sine of 2, so 
that will be zero. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x multiplied by sine e to the x. And this simplifies to minus e to the x sine e to the x. So you see that we never take the derivative of this function, which is inside the interval. So you see, I never differentiate this function. So this, this function is only evaluated at the upper bound and lower bound, and similarly here. So, and this is, this is how we can use Leibniz rule to uh, differentiate the functions which are in integral form. For additional practice, you can take a look at the Apex Calculus 2 textbook, section 5.4. And for any additional help, you uh, visit matchmaticians.com.